happy Monday. Thank you for joining me for this week's Unlocking the Magic of Leadership. Now we're going into week five of our series on neurodivergence, what it means, how it shows up, and what you need to know as a leader. Huge thank you to Courtney Ramsey for joining us last week and talking about her experience with ADHD. Now, we are going to dive into the top myths of ADHD in the series. Now, we are still in our series about neurodivergence in the workplace. And before we jump into this week's video, just a quick reminder, when we're talking about neurodivergence in the workplace, we're talking about adults, we're not talking about children, and we're also talking about individuals that need low support. So a huge thank you to YouTube user in the USA for dropping in a comment and letting me know that the community prefers high support and low support versus high functioning and low functioning. So when we think about support in the workplace, a high support individual would need a lot more assistance than a low support individual when thinking through their day-to-day -day activities. So we are talking about adults in the workplace that are low support in their day-to-day. -day. All right, now that we have that clarified, let's jump into the video. All right, so let's look at the myths. Now, the first myth that we want to talk about, and this is one that I heard when I was going through my diagnosis journey, that ADHD is overdiagnosed. You may hear that everybody's getting diagnosed with ADHD now. It's just a fad. Somebody very close to me who I respect a lot that was in the medical profession told me that when I started going down the journey and I was stunned. The reason why it feels like there's a lot more conversations around ADHD is because one, ADHD was seen primarily as a boy concern, not as girls. And the research around women, which we're going to talk about this shortly, the research around women came out and a lot of women were like, hey, that feels like me. And so there's been an uptick in the information available so that people can make informed decisions to say, hey, this may be something that I have and I would like to talk to my doctor about it. The more resources that we have available, the more knowledge that people have, the more experiences that people are sharing around it creates the ability for people to say, hey, this feels like me. So it is not that it is overdiagnosed. We have better information, better research, and people are asking more questions, which is a good thing. So ADHD is not overdiagnosed. It is simply something that was very misunderstood and is now getting a lot clearer. And the reason why this is important is because I want you to imagine right now that you have been going through your entire life with a 75 pound bag on your back that nobody could see except for you. And you couldn't see other people having a 75 pound bag on their back, but you just assume they did because you do say so they should as well. Now imagine what happens when all of a sudden somebody shines a light on it and says, oh, that's why things like climbing a mountain or walking outside during the heat or just trying to be physical has been so hard for you. You have this 75 pound bag on your back that nobody else has. Wouldn't you want assistance with that? Wouldn't you want to level the playing field? Wouldn't you want to take that 75 pounds that isn't doing you any good and is actually causing you a lot of harm and not have to deal with that? That's what all of these uncoverings around neurodivergence is doing, is people are seeing the 75 pound bag for what it is and not everybody has a 75 pound bag and there's actually tools and resources to remove that weight so that they can function just like other individuals. So it's not so hard. And that's why it's important to be able to have these conversations is instead of saying, oh, it's just not overdiagnosed, you'll be fine. Allowing people to remove that weight. All right, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this particular myth. Now, the second myth, ADHD is only a US problem. Nope, that's not the case. ADHD shows up in cultures across the world. It is not a US problem. So when we're thinking about ADHD, it is a genetic trait. So it is something that is passed down through generations. And so ADHD shows up cultures across the world in very similar ways as what we see in the US. Now the third myth, ADHD goes away in adulthood. You remember this is one of the myths that we had for autism as well. ADHD is a different way of thinking. It's not that it goes away. It's simply that the individuals that have lived their life with it have found tools and resources to be able to adapt, to be able to conform. Now, as they're going through and things change, things shift, things get harder, what they've done in the past may not be working for them anymore. 
And so that's where they're having to learn new tools, new resources, and where the questions and conversations with their doctors is beneficial. Now, the fourth myth, ADHD is only in boys. Talked about this just a minute ago. It is not the case. Medical research for most of the species of humanity has been centered around boys and men. Women are just now becoming a part of the conversation. And so ADHD can show up very differently in boys than it can in girls, just like it can show up different in men than it can in women. And so when we're thinking about ADHD is a different way of thinking. It is not broken down into traditional boy versus girl. And then final myth, you can't focus if you have ADHD. This is one that can cause some damage with relationships, specifically around the leader-employee relationship. Those with ADHD may struggle with focus or they may be really hyper-focused on something that they're interested in. If you have kids or you know kids or you were a kid, then you may remember going to school and being like, oh, I cannot, I cannot. And your least favorite subject. But your most favorite subject, you were all in. You were glued to what the teacher was saying. You were excited to do the things. And if you didn't have any favorite subjects, maybe you got really excited when you got home and you got to read your favorite book or play your video game and you could do that for hours. So when we think about ADHD, ADHD individuals can have trouble focusing on things that they are not interested in or things that they're forcing themselves that they have to do. But they can get hyper-focused on things that they're super passionate about. And then finally, and this is kind of part of the same myth, when we think about ADHD, a lot of times we come to mind of like the hyperactive individual that's running around and in everything and can't sit still and constantly fidgeting. That's not the case. So you may see somebody with ADHD tapping or doodling, doing something that connects their hands and their mind. But it's not going to show up as hyperactivity for everybody. ADHD can show up in multiple ways for multiple people. Remember, it's a spectrum. Not all cases are going to look the same when you're looking at one person with ADHD versus another person with ADHD. All right, that is that for this week. A quick review of the myths. Myth number one, ADHD is overdiagnosed. No, we now know more about it, which is why we're having more conversations. Myth number two, ADHD is only in the U.S. Not the case. It is worldwide and across all cultures. Number three, ADHD goes away in adulthood. It does not. Individuals with ADHD get better at masking it. Number four, ADHD is only in boys. Not the case. It is in boys and girls, men and women, and those across the gender spectrum. And then finally, number five, you can't focus if you have ADHD. That is also not the case. You may just struggle with focusing on things that are less important or difficult. All right. Thank you for joining me for this week and join us next week as I have another colleague that is going to come on and talk about her experience with Tourette's, which also falls under the neurodivergent umbrella. Have an amazing week and don't forget, as always, you got this. I'll see you next week.